Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Today we are having the second lecture on endocrinology. Uh, we will study today the mechanism of action. We have already overviewed the uh, introduction of hormones. Uh, now we are moving forward to the mechanism of action. The first step is the binding of hormone with the receptor. And the receptors, they are large proteins and each receptor is highly specific for a single hormone. Every receptor is specific for its uh, hormone. And uh, as you can see from the diagram that the receptors, it, uh, they may be present on the cell membrane. Uh, as it is obvious from the diagram, the receptors may be present on the uh, cell membrane, they are protein in nature. When the hormone comes, they bind with the receptor, the hormone receptor complex is formed. And then they initiate uh, various enzymes or um, other mechanisms to have uh, complete the cell response. Receptors, they may be present in the cytoplasm or, or in, uh, may be present in the nucleus. Now, what is the down regulation of receptors? Uh, the down regulation of receptor means that the number of receptors, they are decreased. Uh, it may happen when the hormone concentration level is high. Uh, hormone levels are high and uh, they, bind with the, uh, they bind with the more receptors. So, the number of active receptors, they are decreased. Down regulation may occur as a result of inactivation of receptors, inactivation of protein signaling molecules, destruction of receptors by lysosomes or the decreased production. And upregulation uh, is the stimulating hormone. It induces greater than normal formation of receptors. So this greater uh, formation of receptors or greater availability of receptors for interaction with hormone. Next is the uh, after the hormone receptor complex is formed, then there will be the intracellular signaling to ion channel linked receptors. Uh, as we all know that the neurotransmitters, the acetylcholine or the norepinephrine, they combine with receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. And when they combine, there will be the change in the structure of receptor and it will cause opening or closing of the ion channels. The ion channels will open or close for the sodium ions, potassium ions or for the calcium ions. And then through the movement of these ions, then the effects occur on the postsynaptic cell. Most of the hormones, they uh, open ion channel linked receptors through uh, G protein linked receptors or the enzyme linked receptors. So we will uh, see what are the G protein linked receptors. As you can see, uh, this is the receptor which is transmembrane. It loops in and out. It has an extracellular part. It has an intracellular part. When This is a G protein. G protein is in the inactive form. It has three subunits, alpha, beta, and gamma. And in the inactive form, the alpha subunit, it is uh, attached with a GDP. Um, this is the inactive form of the G protein. And when the hormone comes, it binds with the extracellular part of the receptor. A conformational change occur in the receptor. And uh, this G protein, it is converted from the inactive form into the active form. It binds with the intracellular part of the receptor. And then after the receptor, it becomes activated. Then what happens? There may be opening or closing of the ion channels or they may alter the activity of any enzyme, intracellular enzyme. So uh, after becoming active, then the next step what happens that the alpha subunit, it becomes dissociated with the G protein and it becomes attached with an other uh, intracellular signaling protein. And then uh, they may um, change the activity of any other enzyme. For example, say adenyl cyclase. Also, it is important, it depends on whether the uh, enzymes are activated or not, depends upon the G protein is stimulatory or inhibitory. If the G protein is stimulatory, then the enzymes, they are activated. It may be adenyl or phospholipase. 
or uh, if they are if the g protein is inhibitory then there will be no activation of the enzymes the next is the enzyme linked hormone receptors the example uh, is the leptin receptor uh, the leptin hormone leptin is a hormone which is secreted by the fat cells it has an extracellular part and it has an intracellular part the binding uh, they have the binding site on the outside and the enzyme binding site on the inside this is the enzyme uh, jack2 we call it the jack2 uh, enzyme this is the genus kinase it belongs to the genus kinase family when the leptin hormone comes it binds to the extracellular part of the receptor then what happens that the jack2 enzymes they are phosphorylated and they are activated they cause the activation of enzymes plus they cause the activation of the stat proteins these are the transcription proteins and then they increase the transcription by the leptin target genes then the next is the intracellular hormone receptors intracellular hormone receptors they, i have told you before that the receptors they may be present across the cell membrane or the receptors they may be present in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus so you can see from the diagram that when the lipophilic hormones they comes as they are lipid soluble so they readily cross the cell membrane and interact with the receptors which are present in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus so the hormone comes it binds with the receptor the hormone receptor complex is formed and the examples we have the steroids thyroid adrenal or gonadal hormones and uh, when the hormone receptor complex is formed they bind with the specific sequence of dna uh, specific sequence and which is called the hormone response element and uh, they may uh, increase or repress the transcription process and or uh, and the formation of messenger rna so uh, if the messenger rna is formed and then it goes outside and take parts in the protein synthesis so an intracellular receptor can activate a gene response only if the appropriate combination of gene regulatory protein is present next we have the second messenger system uh, the hormones they uh, exert their effects by the formation of second messenger system we have the camp this is camp this is the second messenger one of the second messenger system but it is not the only messenger used by the different hormones we have the calcium ions and the calmodulin and we have the products of phospholipid breakdown in uh, in your book there is a table of different hormones that use adenyl cyclase cmp mechanism and they, they use phospholipase c mechanism so you have to uh, learn a few names of hormones it may be asked in the viva now this is the uh, cmp mechanism we already studied it that the binding of hormone on with the receptor it causes conformational change and uh, g proteins they are activated and gdp is converted into the gdp then alpha subunit it dissociates uh, with from the um, uh, from its complex and it binds with the receptor causing activation of the adenyl cyclase so i have told you that it depends on that if the g protein is stimulatory then the adenyl cyclase is activated and if the g protein is not stimulatory it's inhibitory then adenyl cyclase is not activated so when adenyl cyclase is activated it causes conversion of atp to camp so this is our second messenger camp and uh, once camp is formed what does it do it usually activates a cascade of enzymes it means that the one enzyme is activated which activate a second enzyme and when the third enzyme and so on uh the cmp then it uh, activates protein kinase it uh, changes the protein kinase from inactive to the active form and then the phosphor cause phosphorylation of the protein leading to the cell response now this our second messenger system is this phospholipid second messenger system 
uh, as you can see that the when a hormone comes it binds with the receptor the it will cause activation of the enzyme phospholipase c and um, then uh, they uh, cause breakdown of the uh, phospholipids phospho uh, pip2 it means phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate which is converted into the ip3 i think the diagram is not very clear i'm sorry for this ip3 and dag ip3 is the inositol triphosphate and DAG is diacylglycerol. So what does IP3 do? This is the diagram of your guidon. You can also see uh, from there. The IP3, what does it do? That it uh, mobilizes calcium from mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. And then calcium has its own uh, effects, uh, including muscle contraction. And what does diacylglycerol do? It activates the protein kinase which then phosphorylate protein and leading to cell response. So this is, we have a, one of the mechanism we have, the second messenger is the CAMP. And the second mechanism we have is the phospholipase, uh, second messenger system, phospholipid. Okay, then the third and the last is the calcium calmodulin second messenger system. Um, you can see here calcium second messenger system that when the calcium comes on entering cell, calcium ions bind with the protein calmodulin. Calmodulin has four calcium sites and when three or four sites they are occupied with the calcium, then there will be the uh, activation of protein kinase. When calmodulin is activated, then the protein kinases, they are activated and then the phosphorylate protein leading to the, the cell response, including contraction. Also, uh, calmodulin, it uh, activates the myosin light chain kinase, which act on the smooth muscles to cause contraction. So this is all for today. Class, thank you so much.